Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. In this video, I'm going to pretty much finish up making these front friction shocks. Thank you. 
Okay, so I got these friction shocks pretty much done now. Um, the main thing I changed from last video was I put this mounting bracket in the middle there instead of on one side. That gives the friction pads more area um, to work upon so I don't need to tighten the bolt down quite as much. Um, as you can see, I made those, those, like, those five point springs right there. Those I made out of um, this leaf spring right here. And this is actually the leaf spring off of the front of an old snowmobile. And this worked out really well because the leafs are nice and skinny on this. Um, actual car leaf springs are way too thick um, to have made those out of. So um, I did crack four of them though before I got four good ones, but they worked out really well. I don't have them tightened down right now, but they'll tighten down nicely. Got those bolts through there. Those are half inch fine thread bolts. They should work. They should work out really nicely. I also made these little arms here. These will connect to the bolt that goes through the top of the bat wing here. That'll be the bolt to attach the hairpins. So this will, I'll make a special bolt here that has a mounting point on the back there um, for this thing. But anyways, that's pretty much all I have for the friction shocks. Another thing I'm gonna show you in a couple days here, I'm gonna have a separate video coming out on is, you'll notice on this rear leaf spring here, these spring eyes on the end are on the top of the spring now, instead of on the bottom, um, like this. Up here you can see how this main leaf comes down and the spring eye rolls underneath the spring. That's how this one used to be, but I needed to get a couple inches lower in the back to match the front. So what I did was I took out that main leaf, um, I flipped it upside down and re-arched it the opposite way so that now these, these spring eyes are on the top. And that was a pretty fun process, so I'm going to have a separate video on that coming out pretty soon, and you'll get to see how I did that. And that did lower the rear end um, two inches about, maybe even a little bit more. And so now it's pretty close with the front of how I want it to be sitting eventually. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm finally ready to start making the hairpins. You can see this big piece of tubing right here <laughs> is what I'm going to be making those out of. That's um, 7 8 tubing. Um, I forget the exact wall thickness, but um, that should work out really nicely. I also have these, you can remember I made these here. These are the, the clevis ends that will go up here to mount the hairpins to. Um, these are threaded now. I didn't thread these. I had a friend who works at a machine shop thread those for me. Um, that's a weird size, it's 11 sixteenths. The reason it's so, it's so weird is because 11 sixteenths is, re is really close to already being able to thread into the ends of that tubing. So that just makes it really, really convenient. I also have over here, he gave me a tap for that that I can use since I didn't have a tap like this. So I'll thread the ends of those. Those will screw right into that other side. And then I have the rear mounting points, which you also remember I made recently. Those go on the bottom of the frame. And then now I'm ready to start making those hairpins. And once those are in, the front end will be really nice and nice and solid there. And I think that'll really start to bring things together. So I'm excited for where this is going. I hope you are too. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.